Welcome back to the channel, everybody. How's everybody doing? I hope y'all have had a great week so far. Uh, so, in my previous video, I mentioned about mistakes with the kinky share of Carl that was made, and I had to do some recalculations. So, here is the car body right now, uh, which I've started doing some of the markings on. As you can see, there's the door opening. Kind of did a rough one right inside. Um, and of course, there is a marking. I don't know how well I can see it in the video. Right up here. You can see it right there. Right above the door. So, what I'm going to wind up doing is shrinking the door down just a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> so that way I have the proper clearance between the roof and the door. Um, I did notice in some of the Kiki Sherrill cars in a video I was watching today that the roof pretty much sat right on top of the door. But I want to give just a, you know, sixteenth of an inch uh, clearance up in there. So, uh, that's got to be changed. I also, where I said I made my mistake at, anybody notice anything? Hang on, wait a second, let me get the roof squared up right here. Okay, anybody notice anything? This side, right here. What happened is, while I was cutting this, the guide that I was using had actually moved, and I didn't notice it while I was cutting. So, I can either go the next step, which is to go buy some unset from Hobby Lobby and completely take the side off and trim it. Or I can just go ahead and sand it down and when everything's said and done you'll never notice it. Um, so right now that's kind of where I'm at with this right now. Uh, it was a mistake on my part, as far as his bottom end goes, and it really stinks when that happens because you can sand it out, but you got to rebrace the inside up in here. Not a big deal because once you run the new brace in here, that actually brings the car body to the right level with the floor. So, I've got to decide on that one. How I want to go about tackling it to fix the mistake. Fixable? Yes. Bring it back to print size. Uh, and I'm borrowing some of these Commonwealth MPC era trucks to go up underneath it until I can order the uh, Atlas, uh, which will probably be the fourth before I can order. So, there's that. They work good. Uh, actually, I need to order two sets of them. Uh, one for this one and one for the kit bash. Uh, Kinky Cheryl car. So, that's that. Roof is fine. And also, I need to add the extension onto this to bring it up to a full... 20 and a half inches so by the time I run the diaphragms and couplers and everything's in the scale. So 21 inches is going to come out about right here. It's a big car. Still very low slump. Very, very low slump. Alright. Uh, so I recently had a purchase from eBay. And I wound up purchasing five cabooses for under $20. Uh, I bought, a, bought the lot really for one of the cabooses, which was a kind of a rarity, but not too rare, of a, of a caboose made by Lionel. It is the one that has the cupola that has the slant to it. Uh, and this one was completely 100% intact. Jewels were still on it, everything. And I was like, 
I want that lock for that car. I'm not going to modify it. The only th if I do modify it, the only thing I would get would be a coupler on the rear. Um, which I don't understand why Lionel put the tab back there, but they don't make anything for it to go in there, you know. Um, so that may be something I might do as far as that goes. I may paint the inside and do some minor detail work on the side, just kind of spruce it up. Uh, I don't want to do a lot to that corner. I want to leave it kind of pretty much as it is unless I decide to detail off the inside of it. Uh, <clears throat> the other one that was with it was a, I believe a line uh, Pennsylvania. I don't have it here with me on the truck. I do got three of them with me. But the other, one of them was in a previous lot, and the other three are at the house. Um, another one was Lionel Lines, and it was from red. All the cars were red. <laughs> um, so, I do have three of them with me. Uh, kind of give you a rough idea of what I'm looking at doing with them. Y'all know me. If it's in PCR or 027, it's going to get kit matched, okay? I just, I can't do it. First one, well, let me just get the cars out here first. Uh, so, the first two is right here. ATSF Lionel, I think this one came out of a starter set, which more than likely, it probably did because it's very light, very lightly made. Um, I do like the fact that they did do a little bit of under detailing on it. You know, nothing real spectacular. Um, which was kind of cool. It's got those little push pins that you push in and lock the truck in. But very, very wobbly. Yes, I did test run this one. Uh, the truck for it, the other truck, there it is. Sorry about that, it is right here. Uh, I do like the trucks they're using on these, or at least on this model. I don't know why you can see it. Uh, Maybe you might not see it. But it does pretty good. Uh, I kind of like those trucks. Even though they're plastic with metal wheels. I do kind of like it. Even though it's the same truck, but maybe a little bit different. Well, it's a different truck. I don't know. I don't know if the guy changed them. I have no idea. Um. So, because this one is just light, as I'll get out, and this one has more detailing on it, which is part of the reason why I wanted to keep this one. But, I also have this one, which is heavier. Uh, this one's got the riveted in trucks. They are a heavier plastic wheel, or a truck, a truck assembly. Same body as this one, just a little bit less detailing in the windows. So, my thought was, I've also got this one that was damaged, this came in a previous lot, was to build a scale version caboose. Since both these have metal frames on them, basically use a two-thirds, two-thirds method. If you haven't watched great, uh, Old Frozen Canuck on YouTube, look him up. The guy does some amazing work. Um, and basically, bring these to a scale length. And then I got some leftover parts where I could use part of the cupola to raise this one, bring it up a little higher, maybe you know, bring this up a little bit higher, maybe 
open up those windows a little bit, a little deeper. Um, and use the trucks from this one. And put a different truck on. I guess. I don't know. There's something with it. Um, oddly enough, Line L Lines 6017 has the same truck as this NPC era starter that just smaller version. Huh. May have to borrow a couple. Um, because since this one was so heavily damaged back here, I'm not going to get in and go buy a styrene to cut and remake this whole area right here. Um, and the fact that it doesn't have its ladders here or on the back, which somebody has robbed this car of. Um, yeah, I just, yeah, it's going to get kit bashed. And it brought more into the scale length. Um, sorry, please do. Um, now, one thing that will happen is if I get this other lot, which was a caboose, a boxcar, I think it was caboose, caboose, or gondola. But anyways, I have a bid on it. Um, the main thing I was looking at with that one was the boxcar, because I kind of want to build something unique, and there was a very unique caboose out on the market at one time. I believe it was Great Northern. I could be wrong about that, and I'll have to double check. That was Great, Great Northern. It was a caboose boxcar combo, and it was designed for short line and branch service. So they serve two purposes. You can move freight with that particular car, plus also run it as a caboose with personnel on board. And if personnel on board the caboose would also load the car. Um, so I'm looking at building one. And this car right here may be the piece that's going to get worked on. Uh, I do not know at this point if I want to attach it. Which I know I'll attach it to this end. Okay. To the short end. Um, I got to take a look at some more video of it to see how that's going to fit and what I got to do to raise up the cupola and what modifications I'm going to do to the body here. I believe that is an 027 boxcar in the kit. If it is, it should line up almost perfect with this. Um, and whatever I may have to do with this kit, after I cut it, I may have to add in some more pieces down here. Who knows? Uh, I won't know till I get it or take a look at it. Or if I get it, if not, hey, there's other stuff out there. Um, so yes, that is kind of where I'm at right now with doing all these projects. Um, somebody, y'all let me know, does Lionel make a coupler that slides on to this stupid little tab they stick out there? Um, I... You know, I, I have been looking at this, and I I cannot figure out why Lino puts that tab there. But they don't make anything to go in there. Huh. I don't know, but we'll figure it out. Even if I have to wind up buying a junk set of O-scale couplers just for the coupler and have to modify make a bracket to make it fit. Uh, I like uniqueness. 
Now when I do build either one of these, uh, when these two are kit bashed and put together, you could wind up going dead center. I mean, that would, even if you wanted to go cupola to cupola, let me show you here, you would have a wide cupola and still have a wide train. Or, if you just want to go like that, you'd still have a center, pretty much a center line of boats. But, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm just going to make it longer, bring it into scale, and use parts from this one to go on this one. Uh, when it's done, it will be repainted probably like a mustard yellow and be lettered and striped for the end AM. Um, end AM Limited did have some unique cabooses. Do not get me wrong. They had some very unique cabooses. All the way back from the 1800s, all the way up to the time when they were dieselizing. Um, and some of their freight cabooses were interesting. Very interesting. So I think some of them were maybe built in their shops. Uh, or rebuilt and utilized. Either way, <laughs> it's going to wind up being painted for the end of the um, And then this one, if I get there a lot, it's going to get modified to be fit onto This part, cut, box start, moved on to it, and trucks at either end, and then uh, we'll have one of the unique cabooses that ran here in the U.S. I understand in that video, they say there was only one, but on some research I found there was 10 of them ever produced. And ran on many railroads. They were sold to several different ones, and there's only one survivor, which is the one the guy got a video of. I think that one's at Steamtown, I think. It's either Steamtown or it's in Ohio. But uh, yes, so that's where we're at. And I will see y'all on the next video. Please hit like and subscribe, drop some comments, let me know what y'all think. As always, please hit the Yo, please, please keep the shiny side up, rub it down. I know tomorrow's Friday, and, you know, weekends start getting crazy. I want to see each and every one of you back here, and I want to keep going and keep making content for everybody out here, and just have a good time doing this. Keep the shiny side up, rub it down. I'll see you in the next video.